Hey guys, it's Linux Next here. In today's video, I want to do rather a short guide of how to just set up Helldivers 2 on Linux as um, in the past, I've seen some people uh, try to set up Helldivers 2 or just play it under Linux and they seem to be having problems uh, with it. And also this is just um, if anyone is like, you know, a new user to Linux and they want to play Helldivers 2 and they haven't tried launching it with Proton yet, uh, then this is a pretty good guide for that. So one of the first things that I would do is to make sure that Helldivers 2 is on an ext4 or btrfs partition. Now I know there there is ways of setting up uh, Proton games with the ntfs partition uh, but that way of doing it your games will end up being like either corrupted at some point because wine will do something funky and it'll just break. So I wouldn't recommend going down that route specifically as even Steam slash Valve themselves do recommend that you use ext4 or btrfs FS as a partition for your games to run under on Proton. So if you don't know how to do this, uh, we can install an app called KDE Partition Manager. And after you do uh, install it, you can easily just launch it. You'll have to type in a password. Mine's wrong because I had my caps turned on. And we can have a look at our uh, disks that are mounted or you know, just have a look at the partitions that are created on these SSDs. And as you can see, my main uh, drive on Endeavor OS is uh, in a BTRFS partition. If you have a look at my SSDs, they are on ext4. So when I uh, when I first uh, move over to Linux fully, um, what I decided to do was move my games across to a ext4 partition. And what I did was basically I created an ext4 partition. Then I moved each game across and I kept increasing that ext4 partition until the partition was basically full enough. And maybe there was like one or two games left, which then I would just reinstall those one or two games. I know a lot of people have like a bunch of games installed, but this shouldn't be that hard necessarily you can either if you have fast internet you can just you know, completely wipe the drive format it on ext4 or btrfs and then put all your new games on or like what i did where you, you have a partition and you slowly bring each game across till the ext4 partition is basically the main partition on that drive or ssd or whatever you're using now of course after you have installed steam if you haven't done that you should definitely do that uh, we want to go to our settings so if we uh, bring this up and we want to go to the compatibility in the Steam settings where this is where we are going to enable Steam Play for all other titles. And uh, when you click enable, it's going to ask you to restart. Now, I wouldn't restart just yet because by default, it's going to select Proton Experimental. Now, Proton Experimental is a perfect version to use under um, the majority of your games, but it's called Experimental, meaning that patches uh, that have included in that are really new and haven't been tested that much that they haven't brought them into the stable version of Proton, which at the moment is Proton 9.0-1. So what I would do is run other titles with, and I would select Proton 9, uh, the stable Proton 9 version, because it will give you a more of a stable experience across your games. And if a game doesn't work, then I'll show you how to you know, force compatibility on a game. So now it comes up to, do you want to restart the client? And that's where you would click restart. And after that's done, I mean, there is one more thing that we can do. Uh, if you don't know, uh, in when you install Steam on Linux and enables the shader pre-caching, which means it's going to download shaders uh, for no reason really, because on hardware like NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, they all support a thing called GPL, which is uh, the graphics pipeline. And how this works, it's able to load shaders uh, through this pipeline uh, rather quickly uh, on both the CPU and the GPU. So it's able to load the shaders really quickly. And so you don't need the shader pre-caching. So to disable this, you just go to your settings again go to downloads and then you see shader pre-caching and we want to disable this so then we don't have to download shader pre-caching because we already have a extension or you know, the drivers already support something that is technically better at doing that job than just downloading the shader um, on Steam. And so now that you've uh, downloaded Helldivers 2, it's on an ext4 or BTRFS partition uh, and you know you've enabled Proton and we've disabled the shader pre-caching then basically you can just click play. It's that simple. There's no nothing else really needed uh, for you to make, make the game work. It should work across NVIDIA and AMD. On Intel, I don't know, probably doesn't work because it's a DirectX 12 title and uh, the VKD3D, which is what translates DirectX 12 to Vulkan, uh, on Intel hardware, it's not really that great at the moment.
moment, there's a lot of games that don't work because they have missing Vulcan extensions, like in the driver. So that means you can't really play it. I don't know if, if someone can comment down below if Helldivers 2 actually does work on Intel hardware, like an Intel Arc GPU. Uh, that'd be great to know. But from my uh, knowledge, I don't think it works on Intel, like Arc GPUs, for example. But if you're on AMD and NVIDIA, it should basically just work right out of the gate after you have enabled Proton and disabled those shaders. One other thing we can do is if you want to you know, show your FPS, your GPU utilization, your CPU utilization, then we can use Mango Hut. Now to get Mango Hut, that's pretty easy to do. For me, um, I'm going to open up a terminal because I'm on Arch, so this is just the preferred method of doing that, but usually you'll open up your store GUI, so uh, for me, I have Discover, and if you're like, let's say you're on Fedora, either on the GNOME version or the KDE version, you just you know, open the store, or the other one on GNOME would be the GNOME software store, and you just want to search for Go Overlay. Now what Go Overlay is, uh, it's a the uh, GUI version to uh, configure Mango Hub. Now it's not going to come up for me because it's a system uh, application. So in the terminal, I would just search Go um, Overlay. And as you can see there, it's available in the extra repo. So it's already installed for us. And then uh, we want to find the Go Overlay um, shortcut, which is right here for us as I have it as a favorite. So a couple things uh, will spawn here. We've got the, um, the app itself for configuring the FPS um, overlay. And then we also have a preview that will uh, show up for us so we can look at what is happening. Now, there's a bunch of different options here that you can choose from. There's the um, the size. If you want to make it uh, really big or really small, that's up to you. You can also set the position, uh, the background, so you can change the color if you want to, and then the uh, background opacity, and then uh, there's the borders, and then the orientation. So if you want it horizontal or if you want it vertical. For me, I usually prefer vertical, but I know like our Steam Deck users will usually use the horizontal one because it just fits uh, a little bit better on the device. And then we can go into performance where we can show things like the frame time and the FPS, which the frame time is that green line there. And then the uh, FPS would be right next to the graphics API that is being used. We can also set like FPS limiters, which I don't use FPS limiters personally, but I have heard that it does work quite well, supposedly. Uh, I don't know much about it because I don't use it, but I have heard on Reddit that it does work quite well. So I would test this out if you want to um, cap your FPS. You can also do things like vSync with Vulkan and OpenGL. And then this is where we get to like the metrics part. So there's the uh, the load, the load color, the VRAM, the core frequency, the GPU, the memory, the power, the model, the Vulkan driver, the load, the load cutter, color, the core frequency, the CPU temp, the RAM, and the swap. So these are the ones that I have uh, tagged. And you can see here what they look like. If we do select, like let's say we deselect RAM, and we click save, then it'll update and show us that RAM is no longer being shown. We re-click it, and then there you go, RAM is now appearing. And then there's also the extra page. So I usually like to show the wine version and the engine version. Now, what you can do is if you want to enable, uh, you know, Manga Hut across all your games, you can do the global enable. If you do this, it'll come up with a little pop-up asking for pseudo permission so that it actually can uh, do this globally across your desktop. So if you launch any games, even sometimes um, applications that use Vulkan or OpenGL or any translation layers, uh, <laughs> Manga Hut will be shown on those application or games. So for me, uh, I don't like to have this enabled. I have it disabled. And then I actually just use the uh, launch command on the games that I want to have Mango HUD enabled on. So if we go properties on this, we can see that there is a Mango HUD space percent command percent. And basically how this goes is with these specific Linux like launch commands, you want to put your launch commands inside of this uh, percent command percent. So if let's say Mango HUD or another one you may heard of is like game mode run, which is for prioritizing the game game more so that gets can run specifically better. Um, I don't use game mode run because I have the system 76 scheduler um, installed on my system, which does prioritize the games already. So I don't need to use game mode, but for anything, like if you have any type of launch command, let's say manga hard game mode, uh, let's say like the proton, uh, proton underscore log equals one. You always want to put it in the percent command percent or just behind it. So for manga hard, you would just want to do all lowercase manga hard and then percent command percent and that is it really for me when it comes to you know t uh, setting up how divers 2 so if we now do launch it it should launch uh, properly and you know gameplay that i'll show you is probably going to be um probably pretty similar to uh how you would see it on windows uh, there's not much really of a difference
performance. Uh, I guess when it comes to maybe performance, uh, it might be a bit better for you or it might be a bit worse uh, depending on the hardware that you have. As usually, translation layers uh, do sometimes actually offer better performance than they do on Windows, especially if you're using AMD hardware. They can offer better performance because of the drivers that are in use. But as we can see here, it did launch properly and we can see here that uh, it Valve has recommended that we use Proton Experimental. So that's what's being used. And we can also see like I'm using Mesa 24.0.6, which is my user space drivers that are used on the AMD drivers or the AMD card that we have running. And the performance that we're seeing right now is not really um, reflecting on my performance that I get because um, with I'm pulling about 10% CPU on OBS right now, so it's taking around, taking away around 10% CPU usage on the game. So I'm only getting like 40 FPS right now, but if I uh, recorded with something that didn't take as much CPU usage, um, then the performance would probably be a bit higher. I usually get around 70-ish FPS on the game uh, in this area specifically, not actually in the maps. In the maps, it's around that 60 to 70, uh, roughly. But as we can see, the game is working. We can customize different things, the armory, the weaponry, the character, boosters. We can go to acquisitions. We can buy things and you know, just play the game with your friends as well, which that does work. You can uh, play games with your friends. It does connect uh, properly. And that's really about it for this video, I would say. Uh, so if you guys did enjoy this video, this quick video that I've done for today, I would definitely would give it a like. And thank you to my members on the channel as well. I really do appreciate uh, people who uh, do become a member of this channel. I uh, really do appreciate it. And uh, we're also really close to 4,000 subscribers, which is um, also pretty insane. So uh, thank you all for, uh, you know, watching my videos and, and content. And hopefully you continue to enjoy Linux. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.